Riddle me this. What's black and yellow and snake all over? A Python Patrol Cobra officer. Cobra may have an elite task force filled only with specially trained, specially equipped, specially dressed, hand-picked Cobra loyalists, but it is still Cobra, and Cobra equals troopers, troopers equal officers. Trained and selected to lead Cobra's dangerous, albeit plentiful, trooper squad, the officer is often seen with slightly different gear, including armor, uniform, and weaponry, and this Python Patrol version certainly is no exception. Possibly this collector's favorite released entry in the Python Patrol line so far, this evil general manager comes dressed in typical Cobra officer gear, but in an updated coloring. It is a repaint after all, right? The black tactical pants with black helmet and face covering help to provide a perfect contrast to the excellently chosen neon yellow shirt that probably makes the wearer grateful that their special equipment provides some stealth from electronic detection equipment. Otherwise, the only place this officer can successfully hide would be behind an alley viper. Despite any lack of real-world visual application logic, one can never go wrong with Neon. One can also never go wrong with Hasbro's recent addition to the Python Patrol Squad through partnership with Target. Hey everyone, my name is Jonathan, aka JK of JK Collects, and in this episode we are taking a closer look at the Hasbro G.I. Joe Classified Series Target exclusive Python Patrol Officer. Hey everyone, welcome back. Here we have the Python Patrol Cobra Officer. Excellent presentation, excited for this one. I know I'm excited for every G.I. Joe, but around here on the back, that same presentation, the jungle scene with the uh, surveillance for Python Patrol. Same thing with Tiger Force that we see. Over here on the side, we have the skills and uh, rankings for those said skills. This is number 56, which is moving on up. And over here on the side, the artwork, which is the same artwork for the original Cobra Officer, just highlighted for Python Patrol, right? There he is commanding a whole squadron of Night Ravens, which is fantastic. Would sure love to see that monstrosity come out in this scale. And then same thing, um, the original Officer artwork just updated to match the Python Patrol scheme. And I do love this Python Patrol because it's got that kind of neon yellow with the, um, what is it, reticulated looking snake skin type thing going. But anyways, very cool and uh, just excited to have this. So without further ado, let's bust into it. And there he is, free from his cardboard and plastic confines, the Python Patrol Cobra Officer. Loving the presentation of this figure. It looks, from first appearances, it looks like it's much better executed than some of the other Python Patrols that we have seen as far as paint application. But let's take a closer look and find out for ourselves. So first and foremost, the helmet, it does come off. So like the original Cobra Officer, the helmet came separate right in the package and you could apply it. I just wanted to make sure that it does. It is the same helmet. Uh, it's just cast in black plastic instead of blue, right? So there we go. And then here for the face sculpt, look at that. I mean, the same thing, right? So we have that same uh, head covering with the face covering. Uh, I do appreciate seeing some darker skin tones showing through on there. I look forward to seeing what additional uh, representation we get to see in this line. So. Very cool to see that. And I expect a lot of the same articulation and functionality if you already have a Cobra officer. So the side to side on the head, not a whole lot. And the neck is separate from the torso. The uh, back is actually pretty good. I mean, look at that. It does look upward very well because we've got that hinge in there that does help out. And then the downward is also very good, almost chin to chest on that one. So there we go, I'm happy to see that. And of course, I fully expect absolute full exorcist rotation on that one okay and then here in the shoulders we have that same butterfly joint that we're used to uh just a little bit different appearance in the uh shirt but there we go so full rotation on that and then we have the bicep tricep which does allow full rotation and it is incorporated at that little curve right there there's a little bit of a gap that creates uh, that shows up but uh you know, not enough to really cause too much of an issue. And of course, with this being a reuse of an older one, it does have the double pinned uh, elbows, but they are double and they are flexible even if they do have pins, right? So not bad at all. Uh, we do have the bracer on the wrist. We don't have any wrist rotation. Uh, the bracer is part of it, but we do, sorry, forearm rotation, but we do have wrist rotation. And with the flexibility of it, this is an up and down because it is a weapon holding slash trigger finger hand, right? And then here for the other one, same thing, same articulation, flexibility, and everything on this arm, except for this hand has the uh, 
forward and backward or supination and pronation, right? So it's neat to see the difference, even though these are both trigger finger slash weapon holding hands. Uh, here in the middle, we have that U shape for the, uh, the mid torso flexibility. So we don't have that full range of motion, but we do have that forward back and the back is wow. That is, I mean, how low can you go? This guy's ready for the limbo party um, at Cobra headquarters. So back, we've got one, uh, almost another one right there, but that's a little bit of a stop, a stop there. And we've got the harness is in the way. So another, and it that is actually quite a good range of motion with several stops along the way. Four or five different stops as it goes forward and backward. Now it is a little bit looser than what I'm used to between this joint and between the waist, which we do have waist rotation, uh, but there's a little bit of a wiggle room and we do have this belt, which likes to seem to kind of move around and bounce up above uh, this actual point. However, a benefit of that is it does kind of mask where the gap would be right here at the waist area. So uh, we'll say bittersweet. And then that same kind of down where the leg comes down and goes out for the uh, Cobra officer split. Got to have that excellent flexibility, which I do. I prefer that because I don't mind pushing them back up for the flexibility and articulation that it helps provide. We do have that upper thigh rotation. We have got a double knee. This one is uh, quite flexible. So there we go. And we have boot rotation right there at the calf and the top of the boot. We have forward and backward on the foot. And then we have good old ankle breaker. And that is the same for both of the legs. And these are pinned knee joints, if I didn't mention it. Now the paint applications, I mean, they already look pretty great, right? So looking at the eyes, it just has that angry look to it. And I think the paint on that is pretty well applied. This eye does look a little bit bigger than the other one. I think maybe a little bit more uh, paint got applied to the iris and the pupil right there. So it's, uh, yeah, it's a little bit bigger looking, but uh, you know, I think it adds a little bit of a character to them. I hope this is the only one that looks that way because it makes them look a little bit more fun and interesting, right? And then, of course, I just love the paint application on the shirt. I think it's very well done. This grid, the I want to say it's like reticulation, like a like a snake skin, right? Am I thinking of the right word there? If I'm not, please correct me. I do like being corrected because I love learning. And then here on the braces, they are painted pretty well, but you can kind of see some of the yellowish green showing through down there. But all in all, nothing really stood out as any kind of major issues or any kind of paint problems. Um, so I can't really fault it for much stuff. I mean, here the red looks like it didn't go all the way down, but it is even all the way across. It looks like it was in intentional on this collar. And then the pants are cast in that black plastic pants, uh, the G uh, boots in the gray plastic with the silver buckles painted on there. So very happy to see that. Now let's put these weapons on here because we've got this side sheath for the knife, right? And then we have several different places. You appreciate that uh, a lot of these GI Joes have a spot to carry a lot of their things. If I'm not mistaken, this one is for the site. Uh, if I can tuck it in there, it seems like it's the only thing that is the right size to go in there. I could be wrong. You know, again, please correct me if I am wrong. Uh, this one looks like it's for an extra mag, right? Just based on size. Again, I'm all for being corrected if I am incorrect on these things. And then this, of course, with the opening on the bottom is for the handgun. I am not sticking these things in here very well. Let me try this again. I am uh, absolutely failing at my job here. Okay, so let's do that. Let's try a little bit more convincingly applying that in there, right? Because it doesn't necessarily need it stuck on there at all times. Uh, we can put this maybe in the back. Yep. All right, to carry that one. That one's a little bit larger, but smaller. And then we will put the helmet back on. And then of course we have the, uh, the assault rifle, right? You gotta have that if you're a Cobra officer. You gotta be able to fight your way and be ready to fight alongside your men. You can't just tell everyone what to do and not expect to be ready for battle, especially if you're part of the Python patrol. All right, so there we go. All right, got that on there. Got him fully set up. Thanks for your patience as I stumbled through putting that back together, but there's our guy. Very cool. I just love how everything, almost everything can attach to every G.I. Joe classified figure. So it's just so well done.
Well, that about brings us to the end of this histastic episode. Thank you for taking the time to join us, as always. And if we ever do a review of something you are trying to find for yourself, please follow and DM us on Instagram at, at JKCollectsToys so we can help with the search if we do not already have a way of getting one. Also, if you enjoyed this episode, let us know in the comments and let YouTube know by subscribing and clicking that like button. The more that happens, the more YouTube recommends us so we can hopefully reach even more collectors and help them find the things that they need. Now, if you'd like to see some more videos, we have some links on your screen right now for you to check out. And remember, collecting or not, we are all in this world together. Let's look out for each other. Thanks. So that age old question, seeing the two side by side, what are the main differences? So in here, just looking at it, uh, you can see that the torso, there's definitely a difference right there. Um, we've got the insignia, the, the ranking up there, up in the, the top corner. We don't see it here and we've got lines coming in and down and then across there. We do have it going across here, but not the in and down. And those do appear to be sculpted in where they are missing on this one. So neat to potentially see that there is a, uh, a subtle difference unless I'm absolutely missing something. But then the presentation in the package is a little bit different and it almost makes it look like something is missing, but it's not. Uh, we can do a check across, right? See the same knife. Uh, we have the same uh, handgun. We have that uh, midsize and then the larger rifle, which this one has one of the magazines in it where we've got two magazines over here. And then we've got the uh, detachable sight, right? And then there is our holster. Helmet is off, helmet is on. So this one, fortunately, doesn't seem like anything was left out or removed like we have seen in some of the uh, uh, repaints or reissues.